Hi, welcome to our tutorial on the first derivative test. Now the first derivative test tells us four things. One, it's going to tell us when a function is increasing and it's going to tell us when a function is decreasing. And these, because it's the first derivative, we know it's going to be involving the slope. So we know it's going to be increasing if we know the derivative of a function is positive or greater than zero. We know a function is going to be decreasing when the derivative is negative or less than zero. When there is a relative maximum, well, the slope has to go from positive to negative. So if there's a maximum value, we know the slope has to go from a positive slope to a negative slope. And if there's a relative minimum, kind of the opposite. We go from a negative slope, here's my minimum, to a positive slope. And the first derivative test tells us all of this, and it's very easy to do. Now, if we're looking at a function, it's pretty easy to determine where a function is increasing and decreasing because we can look. Obviously, it's decreasing from here, increasing on this interval, and then decreasing and increasing again. And if you notice, it is the world famous where now function, so I'll sign that one for you, autograph it. But the problem is, what happens if we're given an equation? Well, how do we use an e from an equation how to determine if it's increasing or decreasing? And for that, let's take a look at an example. Let's say we have the function f of x equals, <coughs> excuse me, x cubed minus 6x squared plus 15. And I want to find out where this function is increasing, decreasing, if it has any relative maximums or minimums. Now, if you know from pre-cal, this is a cubic function. So it's going to look something like this. So we know it's going to have a maximum and a minimum value. We know that from pre-cal. We also know there's going to be parts where it's increasing, decreasing, and increasing again. But we want to find out specifically where. To do that, we have to use the derivative. So step one, you have to find the derivative of the function. And remember, that's our power rule, 3x squared minus 12x. And then step two, you have to find the critical numbers. Now, we discussed earlier how to get critical numbers. That's where the derivative is equal to zero or where the derivative itself does not exist, like so. Um, ah, oh, sorry. So if we set the derivative equal to 0, 3x squared minus 12x, set that equal to 0, and we know it's never going to not exist because we're not dividing by anything. Here I can factor out a 3 and x. I get x minus 4 equals 0. So I get x equals 0, x equals 4. So my only critical numbers are 0 and 4. So what that's telling me is that 0 and 4, something's happening to the graph. And in this case, we're going to get our turning points. We'll find out that in just a few moments. Now, step three is the most important. It's called the sign test. Now, the sign test is just a way we use the derivative in order to determine, whoops, excuse me, in order to determine what's happening to our graph, how the derivative affects our graph. So the sign test is basically your x-axis. That's all it really is. And so <clears throat> on top, we're looking at the derivative. And on bottom, it's how does the derivative affect the function? Now, for the derivative, we're only interested in the signs of it. Hence the term sign test. The bottom tells us how it affects the graph, how the signs of the derivative affects the graph. Now, I put my critical numbers here, 0 and 4. And I'm just going to pick numbers in each domain. And there's a few ways you can do this. One, if you know polynomials, that's even positive. They start going po positive, positive, with the middle being negative in this case. But if you forget that, an easy way to do it is just to say, pick a number, negative 1. And I plug it into my derivative between uh, 0 and 4 x equals positive 1. And afterwards, I might pick x equals 5. We plug these into the derivative itself. Now, I'm not going to use this one. That's a little bit com more complicated. Use the factored form. It's much easier because I'm only interested in the signs. Negative 3 times negative 1 is a negative. Negative 1 minus 4, again, is a negative. And it looks like big eyeballs. And two negatives make a positive, right? We know that from uh, Algebra 1. 
So what is because the slope, remember this is my slope. Because my slope is positive, it tells me the function's going up like a disco duck. Now, let x be 1. Same thing. 3 times 1 is a positive. Uh, 1 minus 4 is a negative. And a positive times a negative is a negative. So that's telling me the slope is going down. And it looks like somebody got a black eye. I don't know. All right. So it's negative. So it's going down like a disco clown. Put x equals 5 in. That's positive. 5 minus 1 is a positive. It's a positive. So in this region, it's also positive. So it's going up like a disco duck. And that's your sign test. Now from here, I know everything I need to know right now about the graph. I know where it is increasing because it's where the slope is positive. So it's increasing from negative infinity to zero. And that is because the slope of the function on that domain is greater than zero. It's positive. But there's another region from 4 to infinity, so I should put that one too. Or from 4 to infinity because there's two domains. Um, where is it decreasing? Well, it's decreasing where the slope is negative, and that's from 0 to 4, and that is again because the slope is less than 0. And I can find out where my relative maxes are. My relative max occurs where the slope goes from a positive to a negative. So there's, there's going to be a relative max at equals zero, x equals 0, and that is because the derivative goes from positive to negative. And where is our relative minimum? Right here at x equals 4 because the slope again goes from a negative this time to a positive. It's going down and then up. So that's my relative minimum. And that is because the derivative goes from negative to positive. Like that. And there's our answers. And what's, what I really like about the sign test is it kind of gives you the shape of the graph. Up, down, up, uptown funk, right? Okay. So, and it looks like our shape is what we thought it would be. So, uh, on my next video, I am going to show you a couple more examples, a little bit more complicated. So, uh, if you're in my pre-BC uh, class or AB class, take a look at them. Okay, bye.